A while back, I upped my welding dramatically by getting good gear. Gear does make a difference. I got the Weld Class MST175, and to be honest with you, I haven't looked back. This thing hasn't fallen apart in two years. Obviously, the weakest link in the chain is always going to be the person behind the welder, and I'm still working on that. But today, I'm looking at changing my environment. I've been a little bit worried, and you could say perturbed, by welding on a timber bench. It has caught fire a couple of times. It's a bit annoying because it stops you. Today, what I want to do is build a steel bench that provides a good earth and provides lots of nice right angles and clamping potential to hold my work down that's away from the wall so I can walk around the work without having to lift it, flip it, and move it. If you're like me, you've been having a look at the forums and there's a number of different opinions on what the ideal welding table is. Well, let's go and visit Steve Casamento from Trigger Engineering and find out from him what his recommendations are for the ideal farm welding table. <laughs> Whenever I want advice about welding or engineering, I always come and see Steve. He's not only the brains behind Fence Day, but he's a really clever engineer and does a lot of really heavy duty engineering. If he recommends a welding bench, it's gonna have to be good. Steve, how are you, mate? How about yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Mate, the fence day stuff's flying out the door. You don't have much stock of some left. Yeah, no, people are getting used to not having to weld, grind, or cut on site, so they're enjoying banging these posts in. That's good to see an Australian-made product taking off, mate. Yeah, it is, it's great. Mate, I'm after some advice. You do a lot of really cool, really heavy-duty engineering. I figure, you can sort out a little bit of a query for me. I'm seeing a lot of different stuff on forums and things for welding benches. I'm seeing flat plate steel with lots of holes cut in it. I'm seeing steel bars. I notice that you've got the steel bars. They seem to be the simplest option. Are these the ones that you prefer? It is, it seems to be the most uh, versatile option for me. And I suppose versatility is a big thing for you, mate. Yeah, it is because you never know what job you're gonna be doing um, this way. We can clamp down onto any of these bars. Um, yep. It's just a standard clamp you get from anywhere. Straight down, it's clamped. If you want to clamp flat jigging plates, you can. And I suppose you've got all these right angles as well. You've got these benches absolutely flat and absolutely square. Definitely, yeah, dead square and dead flat. What's the, what's the trick to getting them dead square and dead flat, mate? A lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> these ones, these bigger ones did take a lot more time than we wanted to, but yeah, um, right. because we were concentrating on getting them dead square and dead flat. So you use a level or something, do you? Use levels, we use a laser level as well, good okay. squares. Yeah, Just, right. And general measuring and marking out techniques as a fitter would have. I suppose for me, welding at home, I don't have the same equipment as you, but I, I suppose your big take home message then is get it as square as I possibly can. And as flat as you can, because every job you do on this afterwards is only going to be as flat as, as your benches. Bench that you weld on. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Now you don't have any benches at all with flat plate with holes in them. Like None. Those fancy jigs and everything that you can get to set angles and all the rest of it. What's the reason for that? Because yeah, you get you can get halfway through a job and if you run out of, you got a big job that needs a lot of clamping, yeah. and you run out of those special clamps and you've got to order them and wait for them. You're in right, trouble. So I suppose I can, you can just go to Bunnies and get some more. Can't you? Just straight up and get some get some more. Well, you know, these are my favourite, but. Um, yeah, and just get some more as many as you like. We quite often will intentionally buy those cheap clamps because we are going to modify and damage them. Okay, mm. all right. So this is the way to go, you reckon? Definitely for me. Now this is the original bench. This was made out of pretty heavy, heavy material. I reckon this is about the size I need at home. Yeah, that's 600 by 1200. And what are the gaps in between here? 100. 100, all right. Yeah. But you can go, as long as you can get a clamp in there. So 50 is enough. Right. Know, 50 mil clamp, 50 mil is plenty. Um, now it looks like you've used some pretty heavy wall steel for this. Yeah, that's six mil wall, I think. Oh no, this one's yeah five mil wall. Is that the minimum you reckon? Or for me, it is. A little bit less. You can go so less on this shorter span. Yeah. You can go less, but on the bigger ones that we've got over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now we did six mil wall. Right. I suppose the heavier the better, isn't it? When you yeah. come to a welding. Well, when you want to bang on something, you don't want it vibrating back at you. The steel for the project is pretty basic. I'm using 3mm wall thickness steel for all parts of the frame and tabletop, and I'm using 2.5mm wall thickness steel for the legs. For the outside frame and the leg braces, I'm using 100 by 50 steel, and for the tabletop and the legs, I'm using 50 by 50 square section tubing. 
For the sides of the frame, I had two sections of 1200mm 100 by 50 and I had them mitre cut at the reseller, saving me time and making sure that my job was more accurate. Now I'm using a large square for my initial layout just to make sure that my corners are evenly matched up and as square as possible before I start to tack this. I am just going to dob a weld or two on each corner so that I've still got some movement in here and I can do last minute adjustments. But the closer I get this stuff to perfectly right angles, the better. Annoyingly, there was about a three millimeter discrepancy in the length of the steel. So to adjust for this, I had to use the grinder. So to work around this, I put the frame up on its side with two squared ends still intact and then use the internal pipes to set my square, adjust the frame, and then weld it up. Because we took the time to get the table frame square and flat, I was able to use a couple of the slats as spacers to spot weld the rest in place. And that means that we just left with the last two To do some precision measurement before we tack them up. Now I've gone over the frame one last time with a square, made sure everything's at right angles and it's flat and level. I've lifted it up onto the old dodgy sawhorses, hopefully the, for the last time ever with a welding job, because I'll have a table from now on. And now all I've got to do is use a bit of weld class creativity, finish off all the welds, and get her ready for the legs. Okay, that's the bench top done. Now it's leg day. Don't neglect leg day. Well there you go, job's done. A nice, solid, square, stable table for me to do all my welding of future little projects around the farm. I reckon every farm should have one of these and you needn't be intimidated if you approach it step by step and use the right steel and the right tools it can make the job really easy to do. I've really enjoyed using the World Class gear for this project. I know you can get away with cheaper stuff, but using good gear makes you a lot more confident and that lets you practice more and that practice makes you a better welder. So the better the gear you use, the more chance there is that you're going to enjoy the job and get better at it. Guys, if you like this kind of content, don't forget, hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, plenty more on timthompson.ag and if you want to have a look at this gear, check the link in the description.